If you told me a few years ago that I would be sobbing like a baby watching a live action adaptation of a video game fetch quest for a car battery in a show from the dude who wrote Scary Movie 4, I would probably laugh in your face. But episode three of The Last of Us sure as heck proved me wrong. HBO's adaptation has received widespread critical acclaim for how well it's translated the already critically acclaimed video game to live action, but one totally valid criticism leveled at it is that it didn't take much work to nail the plot and tone since Naughty Dog's cinematic storytelling and structure already laid so much of the groundwork for it. The first two episodes of the show have followed the game fairly beat for beat in terms of introducing Joel, Ellie, and the circumstances that have led to them backpacking through this fungal post-apocalypse. Episode three, however, is where the show really takes something familiar and turns it on its head. What's your name? Bill. Change is hard, but it's inevitable when telling a familiar story in a new medium. Let me tell you how The Last of Us Episode three makes some huge changes and tells a brand new story in the process, but in a way that builds on the source material rather than just paving over it for no good reason. I'm old. I'm satisfied. And you were my purpose. In the game, Joel and Ellie make their way to the town of Lincoln in search of Bill, a survivor who Joel had smuggled for in the past, hoping he can supply them with a vehicle. I need a car. On the show, episode three opens with Joel and Ellie on the way to Lincoln, and it ends with them driving away in Bill's truck. But basically everything that happens in between is different. People frequently get mad when movie or TV adaptations make changes to beloved source material. And that anger is, let's be real, often justified. Name! How are you? Last name, Mario. But adaptation by definition involves change. In biology, it's when an organism develops new traits to help it survive its environment. Like, I don't know, a parasitic cordyceps fungus responding to rising temperatures by aggressively seeking out new hosts to proliferate its species. In the case of media, an adaptation involves changing a story to make it better suited to a new medium. What makes for a fun video game doesn't necessarily make for a good primetime drama and vice versa. Shooting at and running away from hordes of zombies is something that's been done to death and beyond that in practically every medium. What made The Last of Us the game so special, in addition to excellent gameplay, is how it explored concepts established by so much genre fare with the gravity and nuance of a serious prestige drama. There are great stories involving post-apocalyptic wastelands filled with infectious flesh-eating monsters, but it's safe to say that there's also a lot of mediocre garbage. So in the game, Bill is a grizzled survivor holed up in a town filled with booby traps and homemade barricades. Jesus! Whoa. A not so subtle metaphor for how he's walled himself off emotionally. While butting heads with Joel, he makes passing mentions of a guy named Frank, a former partner. I had somebody that I cared about. A partner. Somebody I had to look after. Bill shepherds Joel and Ellie through a labyrinth of dilapidated buildings and wrecked vehicles in search of some car parts, fighting off waves of clickers in the process. <laughs> Eventually, they come to a safe room and find Frank, who's hung himself after becoming infected. Jesus. While searching the house, Joel finds an angry letter that Frank left for Bill on the off chance he stumbled upon it. The last line, Frank would rather die trying to leave than spend another day with Bill. Up until this, Bill's no bullshit demeanor and general terseness leaves some ambiguity about whether this partner was a business associate or a lover, but Frank's note pretty much suggests the latter. And if that wasn't overt enough, the gay porn that Ellie swiped from Bill kind of hammers it home. I wanna see what all the fuss is about. Now on the show, virtually every aspect of Bill and Frank's relationship is completely flipped, but the characters still feel totally authentic to how they were introduced in the game. The arguments they get into echo the grievances in Frank's letter, but on the show, it's almost like Bill passed a bunch of dialogue checks to unlock the good ending. Well, you know, as close to the good ending as you can get in the bleak, unforgiving world of The Last of Us. Episode three of the show acts as a nearly standalone origin story for Bill. He was your textbook example of a doomsday prepper. Sorry, survivalist, who seemed to welcome the end of the world with open arms. After the town of Lincoln was evacuated, Bill springs into action. Video game Bill's booby traps and safeguards were rudimentary, seemingly pulled from the same playbook as Wile E. Coyote or Kevin McAllister. But on the show, Nick Offerman's Bill channels the libertarian ideals and exquisite craftsmanship of Ron Swanson. Any moron with a crucible and acetylene torch and a cast iron waffle maker could have done the same. Constructing elaborate defenses that turned the town of Lincoln into not just a private stronghold, but something of a paradise. Before long, Frank, played by Murray Bartlett, stumbles into one of these traps. Bill begrudgingly lets him in for a warm meal and a hot shower, and things get steamier from there. 
After the requisite Sunday night HBO prestige drama sex scene is out of the way, we're treated to a genuine and earnest love story. And for a show about a fungal apocalypse, it's a lot more slice of life than monster of the week. The biggest conflicts are on a smaller scale than what we've come to expect from this world. Frank wants to spruce up the neighborhood and invite over friends, and Bill, true to his video game counterpart, is stubbornly opposed to change, frivolity, or anything else that might compromise their safety. We don't have friends. But this time around, he gives in to make Frank happy. Joel and Tess come over for dinner, which proves to be the start of a fruitful business relationship in the most literal sense. They start growing strawberries. <laughs> oh. Oh. Though a brief firefight with some raiders seemingly leaves Bill mortally wounded, the deadliest threat of this episode turns out to be something even harder to fight, which hits a lot closer to home. Despite Bill's gut instinct to try and fight and survive, Frank points out that there was no cure for cancer before the world ended, and it's only gonna get worse. In the game, Frank said that he would rather die than spend another day with Bill, and in the show, one more day is his dying wish. Do you love me? Yes. Then love me the way I want you to. After their perfect last day together, Bill respects Frank's wishes and serves him a big glass of wine laced with sleeping pills, and then pours himself one as well. Okay, so maybe a suicide pact isn't your fairy tale happy ending, but Bill and Frank had their perfect last day together and ended things on their terms. In the game, we never actually find out Bill's fate, but it doesn't really seem like it's very hopeful. We square. We're square. And get the f out of my town. Following Bill and Frank's last meal, Joel and Ellie arrive in Lincoln to find a note, penned by Bill, addressed to Joel, or, you know, whoever stumbles across it. It's reminiscent of Frank's note from the game, but instead of being bitter and vindictive, it's actually pretty sweet. You know, in that, in that Bill sort of way. I used to hate the world, and I was happy when everyone died. But I was wrong. After finding and charging a car battery with considerably less trouble than they do in the game, Joel and Ellie hit the road in Bill's blue and white striped pickup truck. The only thing that happens differently during their time in Lincoln that has any major repercussions on the show is Ellie swiping one of Bill's handguns. In the game, she just swipes his porn. How will this gun come into play? Did she also steal his porn? We'll, we'll have to wait until next episode to find out, I guess. This episode isn't for everyone. Aside from the fact that it's a gay love story, which will undoubtedly outrage the worst people, some folks are just gonna gripe that it's different from the game, or that it backburners Joel and Ellie for a whole hour, or that there aren't any clickers or action scenes. Whatever the discourse about this episode is, it shouldn't be overlooked that the underlying message for it is that being open to change and trying new things makes life better. In the game, Bill is stubbornly rooted in his ways, and as a result, his is one of the more tragic stories. <laughs> In the show, he lowers his defenses and takes some chances and ultimately winds up way better off because of it. It's still a totally tragic story, but there are way worse ways to go out. Adaptation, whether it's in nature, media, or day-to-day -day life, is about making the best of new circumstances, and this episode is gonna push some folks out of their comfort zone. But that's kind of the whole point. If you just want to experience the events of the video game all over again, but a little bit different, well, they remade the whole game last year from the ground up with new visuals, so you can go play that. Or if you'd rather just watch, there are plenty of playthroughs on YouTube. They don't require a HBO subscription, so go, go check that out. As the saying goes, familiarity breeds contempt, and an exact one-to-one, shot-for-shot, live-action remake of the game wouldn't necessarily make for very good TV, and it'd probably still get nitpicked to death anyway. We've seen a lot of adaptations change a bunch of stuff in the source material for no good reason, especially in the video game space, but this time around, I think they made some really good changes, and I think they stuck the landing. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments below, and for more on The Last of Us, be it the game or the show, you're already in the right place, IGN.